what we're looking to do now is we there is definitely needs to be a sort of a warmth that happens. The, this avenue has got its oranges, uh, its purple oranges, and obviously the trees we put in those stronger contrasts. But there needs to be a sparkle, and that sparkle is going to come from adding that yellow back in again that we used originally with that light. We can take a little bit of that. That it's a, it's a cadmium yellow, and the nice thing about this is that it's going to create just another dimension. Now it is because the, the leaves are turning towards the, the greens, but we can put little dots of these guys in and around everywhere that shows that things are just going to start sparkling a little bit more than what we've got already. And it may, in some cases, create a little mid-tone between the white white and uh, the the blue in the background so that there is this medium that exists and again we're just trying to put these in a random in random places so that it just starts to jump out a little bit and what that does is it creates a little bit of optical chaos and that suddenly now you're not it's not going to be this um, total dominance by the oranges there's a breakup of it and we're on to about seven or eight layers that we've been working with here. So the idea is that we, we are creating this beautiful dance that uh, would be if you were to walk up to the canvas. And the idea of a successful painting, I think, is to take somebody on a journey. Um, not only the, the obvious, which is to, to stop them, to move them, but to, to really get this this canvas to start bouncing backwards and forwards and, and you're seeing different things which only comes as a result of a lot of time and the building process and you just follow the rules of this, the subtle building process with oil it does take a little bit of time in that you're allowing certain layers to dry so that you can put stuff on top of it otherwise it does become a little bit muddy but you, you find that you can quite easily do that just with maybe perhaps working on different canvases at the same time uh, or just just being patient and doing other things in between so here we've got that yellow that is that is starting to to sort of sparkle on the top it could do with a little bit of green uh, coming into that yellow but we'll come to that just now once it falls to the bottom there may be a little bit of that that yellow that, that just bounces around on the bottom here but we're not going to put too much in here because there isn't actually any of those leaves that sit on the ground too much but we do need to make sure that the color is carried throughout the whole canvas so it's a dry hog hairish brush which is going to scribble across the canvas there we go so we do get a little bit of that that uh, that yellow to, oh, a little bit too much there, but you get the um, color to come to come through a little bit. There, so those are the colors. Now, what we want to perhaps do is we've still got a little bit of this blue. We can take a little bit of this blue out into that yellow, and we get that really quite delicious green. It's a sort of a limey a limey green, which we can throw on the top of that as well. So we just get a medium, a medium sort of just before they start, right at the beginning process, before they start going into those yellows, before they turn into oranges, we get some of that green to, to come out. And we see that that is a little bit better. Maybe on the sides you're creating a little bit more of detail, just so the canvas continues to color and cover a sort of multitude of different avenues there so it's not just make sure this composition there we go we don't have any green down the bottom necessarily maybe just one or two hops of it and there we sort of start getting towards the end of what we're looking for if you if you were to look at this canvas and you sometimes it's a good idea to stand back from your from your work and have a look at it 
I find that the, the that that green and um, this green in the background, that blue, is actually quite strong, and it's been a little bit too dominant throughout the entire canvas. And so, if we were looking to do something, it would be to bring in a little bit more of that light. And so, if I were to have a little bit of this um, this white that we used with the purple. Uh, previously you can bring a little bit more of that light in and what that will perhaps help do is to also push that that background backwards we can use a little bit of this this color to um, to work into the background to to really push it back and um, get that that green to just disappear and that, that blue to, to really push in the background so to end up with just having the focus here but um, that is in essence totally up to you and what you see. I just want to try and bring in a little bit more of this light in here that we get more of this real light to to sparkle in between our trees as the last we so we've gone light and we've gone back to dark and we're coming back to light just so that we do get a real dance of these this this light into the dark so you have a, a real nice contrast between the between the two there's the absolute spark of that dappled light coming through which the impressionists in the late 19th century were really looking to um, do as they get this what they used to call on plein air painting where they were painting outside and literally trying to catch that dappled light as it hit the hit the earth and yeah this sort of this would be I suppose midday so the light isn't changing that quickly and if you were to stand outside and watch it you'll find that in about eight or nine minutes you will see that the color has changed a bit as opposed to in the afternoon where every three four o'clock in that golden hour you or four or five o'clock depending on where you are you'll see that the light changes every 10 seconds you're seeing the pigment of a turn and it's, it's an exciting thing to do if you're, if you're looking for something to do is to watch color change and you sit outside and you watch a wall and you see how that color you try and identify it against the swatch and you see how those colors do actually change very quickly. We've forgotten about our little bit of a fence here and that it does need a little bit of uh, colour to come through it. Obviously we need to get maybe some reflection off that tree to get it to be not so aggressively strong and darks. Just put a little bit of that medium light